This episode of Fermented Adventure, the podcast, features Sonia Hunt of ABV Jobs. We take a journey through three expressions doing a blind tasting of Noble Tennessee Whiskey, Bar Distillery, and Keeper's Heart Whiskey. Be sure to reach out to Sonia and let her know what you thought about the podcast. Cheers! Hello, ladies and gentlemen, craft spirit enthusiasts, and those interested in the intoxicating world of craft distilleries, cideries, meaderies, wineries, and the occasional foray into breweries. It's Rich Sheen, and welcome to Fermented Adventure, the podcast, where we bring you the fascinating people that are making the mash, fermenting, distilling, bottling, pouring, and delivering to you some of the finest libations in the world. Before we get started, here are a few housekeeping items. Thank you for bringing the podcast into wherever you are and whatever you're doing. We truly are grateful that you've chosen to listen and make us part of your day. It would mean the world to us if you left a five-star review. This helps us climb in the rankings and it makes it easier for others to find us. Don't hesitate to leave us your comments as well. If the podcast didn't meet your expectations, tell us why. We're always striving to improve. You can find us at fermentedadventure.com. We are on Instagram and Facebook as Fermented Adventure. Email us at fermentedadventure at gmail.com. All right, F.A. Nation, let's meet our guest. She's Sonia Hunt. I'm Rich Shane. This is Fermented Adventure, the podcast. Sonia, finally, welcome to the podcast. Thank you, Rich. <laughs> now, now, what's really exciting and fun for me is we had spoken about this. We have been trying to do a podcast episode together probably now for a couple of years. But the beauty of it is you continue to add things to your resume. So we get to talk about more stuff. And the first thing I want to talk about and introduce to our listeners is ABV Jobs. What is ABV Jobs? Um, ABB Jobs is a fusion of my two passions and 20 plus years experience in HR and also a return to the spirits industry. It is a job board created um, for the niche market of the alcohol beverage industry. So it's exactly what it says it is. You know, it covers the umbrella, the whole scope of all alcohol beverages and you know, spirits, brands, wines, you name it, all under one roof. And those candidates seeking to, you know, either start in the industry or, you know, grab some footing, some more additional work stuffs and build their resume a little bit more, you know, share their experiences. So it's from your novice to your professional. And, you know, we're growing. We're small but mighty. (laughs) <laughs> you, you talked about this being a melding of your passions, but how did the idea come to you to start this? My, my journey um, began back back into the industry, began during COVID. And, you know, I just picked back up um, getting into sensory training and then an opportunity with uh, the Marianne Eves uh, was presented to me and I joined, went out to Colorado for an extended period of time, also spent some time there on the West Coast and, you know, migrated back over here to uh, good old Virginia. And um, I couldn't find a job. I couldn't find, you know, that opportunity that I was looking for. Either the pay was low, there were there were so many gaps, you know, and exactly what I was looking for. And I said, there's something out there for me, but I just couldn't get with it at the time. And being new in the industry, I I said, you know, being an HR professional, there's a definitely other people going through this. How can I help them? You know, I'm going to be okay because at the end of the day, I'm also a human resources professional full time as well. And, you know, I started getting people saying, hey, have you heard of this opportunity or do you have anyone that fits this opportunity? And I started networking and merging the two together. So It was just, you know, history after that, (laughs) you know, filing and stuffs legally and then making it, you know, making the dream a reality. And I dragged my feet a little. So it wasn't, you know, smooth sailing and it was not, you know, so streamlined. But here we are. Now, this is you're you're a matchmaker in the spirits and beverage industry. You're bringing candidates to companies or companies to candidates and from that standpoint, talk about the process and, and how you're 
getting those candidates, how you're getting those prospects, those businesses to come together. Okay, right now, we don't have any paid marketing that we're using. So since we're in that startup phase, we're just word of mouth and also social media platforms and things. We also have a a website, of course, for the job board. So anyone in the industry, uh, you know, word of mouth or either in passing at uh, events such as the festivals, you name it, just speaking about it and and networking through right now. And that is going to change 2024, of course, because we intend to scale. However, again, during the startup phase, th- it was essential for us to try to um, budget and be reasonable in our expectations and to just see if there was a market also. So um, being able to again, bring together employers, those organizations that are definitely hiring new organizations looking for um, a, 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 in a route to candidates that are interested. Um, they may not have that. Or again, the job boards may be saturated. So I've spoke about saturated job boards before, and it's important for people to know from a recruiter standpoint, you know, that you're not always getting fresh jobs presented to you. And the candidates oftentimes are recycled. So yes, you may you may receive 200 applies. However, you have 12 good resumes in front of you out of that 200 applies. And because of those statistics and what I've seen um, as the recruiter, you know, you really want to get right to it. You have to hit the ground running when you're starting up a distillery. You need both um, fresh candidates, your novices that you can train. And you also need, you also need those skilled um, laborers as well to, to join your, your um, organization. So again, it's important to be able to bring, you know, a plethora of those candidates over to, um, organizations looking for them and vice versa. Something that stood out that you said, the applications can be monumentous. Now, is that something that ABV jobs will do that they'll start to screen out and synthesize some of those applicants so that let's say that new upstart distillery uh, can have these smaller amount of candidates versus that, you know, hey, we're just dumping a truck in your front lawn. You go through them, right? Yes, I, I've done that. Right now, I can do that while we're still scaling. While we're at this size, I can give personal attention to those um, as applicants, you know, and those resumes coming in. I also have help, of course. So we're able to do that. But you know, as we as we grow and what we're projecting for 2024, I'm really looking to let the system, you know, the um, automated system do its work. Also, there's there's two different types of um, employers that join us. Th- those employers that want our ATS connected applicant tracking system for anyone that doesn't know. Thank you. Because um, if you saw the deer in the headlights look on my face, like, I did. was I supposed to know what ATS meant? I don't even know. So thank you for clarifying that. Yes, there's so many acronyms out there, Um, you know, but looking to connect their job board directly to um, ABV jobs and therefore, you know, applicants will funnel into their system. They'll be applying directly to that employer versus coming through our system and being screened in that way. So there's two different ways to do it. And it's, it's not actually up to the uh, employer. I've noticed that your mid to large scale employer tends to lead more towards, okay, we want it all under one roof, one ATS, and that's feasible for them. However, the smaller organizations may be looking for something a little more dedicated to, um, I can go into this system and then I can log into my uh, Indeeds, my LinkedIn, so on and so forth, and grab my applicants from each of those and, and screen in that way and also compare which job board is actually working for me. So I'm not afraid of competition. I don't consider there to be competition. I'm doing something standout and very different, and I pride myself in that. That's exactly what I was thinking as you were describing that a little bit, that as the spirits industry, as the beverage industry continues to grow and grow up in a way, 
there is more need and you found a niche. You found something that I think a lot of these employers and employees would like to find that they don't have the time. Their heads are down. Then the next thing you know, somebody says, hey, I'm just giving my two weeks notice or I, I got a better job somewhere else or I'm leaving the industry because I'm burnt out. All the reasons why. And now this ABV jobs fills such an important niche in the industry that I think that this is something that people should be clamoring and knocking down your door to uh, to get on board with. Yes, thank you. Thank you. This is much more than a hiring platform. This is a commitment to change and inclusion and something new. Uh, this is uh, dedicated to both the organization and the applicant. And you rarely get that. It's not about numbers. It's not about clicks. It's not about revenue. It's about the opportunities. It's about the industry. And that's what I want to focus on. When I was out there and I was searching, again, it was very important to me to be able to also meet people where they are and also, you know, the organizations as well. Some some organizations, it's word of mouth for them. You know, so how exactly do you track that? How exactly do you uh, speak to your metrics in terms of hiring and fairness and, you know, all those other things that, you know, some applicants are familiar with and that they're looking for in the organization. So bringing over my HR expertise was was essential in this. This being a startup and you are really working on ramping this up. Talk about some of the challenges that you've been facing to get to this point to where you are now. Again, um, seeing seeing that there is, like I said, your Indeed, your LinkedIn, so on and so forth, that all started in the same way that I've started. It, it's, it's challenging at times to speak to the fact that you're the new kid on the block and that you have something a little different. But again, as it continues to churn and more and more people become aware of it and they add their resumes to the database and the organizations join, they will see, you know, we have everything under one roof. We don't have to filter through. We don't have to get, you know, someone that is just clicking apply because this job board, again, is niche. So you're not going to get someone that's applying for a nursing gig and sending their resume and just hitting apply and having to weave through all, all of that stuff again. So that that was one of the challenges. Another challenge was, and I won't say copycats, but you know, there was a slight challenge with um, my trademark initially. I filed my trademark myself. And again, I pride myself in originality and being able to process my dreams and, and really go through things. So uh, for about, I would say two years, a good two years I sat on ABV jobs before actually uh, moving forward with it. I had my URL, um, I had paperwork filed and things of that nature, um, my LLC. And I had someone say, well, a group of people say, you know, like that was ours. And, you know, of course you have a, mo a timeline in which you can challenge and they weren't able to answer. So, you know, you have those little things that try to knock you off the block, so on and so forth. And you just have to put one foot in front of the other and you have to believe. You you also have to have a strong support system and people around you that are supportive when things aren't so good. It, it's not smooth sailing. Again, it's, it's all about you being able to put in the work and swing big, you know. <laughs> That's that's it. You know, I, I don't believe that this is happenstance or or that, you know, it's something that I, I, I came, I saw, I did, I got the t-shirt. No. No, this is something that was meant to be. You mean to tell me there's no ABV jobs t-shirt yet? No. Okay. <laughs> You want to work on that with me? <laughs> I would love to. I'm gonna ask you, look, I'm gonna ask you that job applicant question. Where do you see yourself in five years? In five years, I see myself being able at, at that scalability of being able to think about the next stage, you know, and and what that looks like in terms of taking it to the next level. Um, 
I'm, I'm still going through that right now. Uh, I know where I'd like to be in five years. And I would say for anyone to say that they would like to maintain a business past five years and, you know, be the sole owner and so on and so forth or partner and things, you know, it's nice, but you're also looking for that next adventure and you're, you're looking for um, being able to maintain what you have, but also inviting new opportunities that come along with that. So I see so much in store for ABV and, you know, I'll speak more about that later. Okay. Now for those that are looking to connect or find a way to get within the database or just learn more about what you do directly, is there a website that they should go to? Yes. ABV, A as an apple, B as in boy, V as in victory, jobs.com. And do you have a social media presence for that? Or is there an email address that people use? It's ABV jobs, social media platforms, And the email is Sonya, S-O-N-J-A, at abvjobs.com. All right. I can't wait to watch this scale and grow and then find out that there's that job out there that I can say, you know what? It's time for me to get that job, that whatever that is in the industry. And I'll look on the ABV jobs board to see if it's out there. So that'll be part of my adventure. Thank you. Thank you. And by then we'll be a full fledged conduit (laughs) of opportunities for everyone, you know, you name it, your veterans, everyone, you know, like I said, I have so much in store and so much to get out actually. And that's, that's one of your main challenges as a startup, just, you know, keeping that traction, keeping it going, you know, and um, being able to get it out as quickly as you would like it to. All right. You mentioned passions. And I want to ask for you, whiskey, bourbon, where did that start for you? Because I've known you for, I would say, six or seven years. And until I started seeing some things surrounding you on social media, I'm like, how come I never knew this? You didn't know I was that deep. That's right. No, that is. We did like the whole Ripplewood thing. And, you know, that's the that's the main line whiskey, you know, chic place there. Yeah, I don't know, Arbor. is Ripplewood yeah. still there? Yeah. It's, so Ripplewood. And thriving and doing well. And yes. But but we were there and you had all these things abounding and nothing. It's a quiet. It's a secret. Where did all so, this start so for you? That's, that's what I, you know, I, I guess it's it's going back to the basics, right? So. For those of you that don't know, I know Rich from back home. And like you said, we go back six or seven years. And I had a thriving um, uh, jewelry boutique. And, you know, no brick and mortar, but it was online. And I also did jazz festivals around the country. So um, fast forward. Rich and I are talking. I have all these great opportunities and things going on and I'm partaking of whiskey and spirits and things, but my passion was not in doing anything whiskey related at that time. Um, I had taken a break from my introduction into spirits for like a good, I want to say 20 years. And then again, during the pandemic, that just presented so many opportunities to be able to get back into something that, you know, I enjoyed on another level. Some people, they're behind the bar. That's where they want to be, you know, forever. And that works for them. Some people are, you know, from the house, hospitality, so on and so forth. My management background, again, put me into an, another um, area of, of the uh, industry. And so when the pandemic hit, I found myself going through pours, tastings. Again, yeah, like everybody getting... else, we're stuck inside. What are you going to do with all that time? That's right. There's stuff to drink. <laughs> and, and all those bottles that you have. So I had like your master's keeps and other bottles and things that I had that I would enjoy from time to time. But then I found myself shopping a little more and growing, you know, what, what, became my stash. I'll say a stash instead of a collection because I never intended to be a collector. And I don't, I still to this day do not label myself a whiskey collector, you know? Um, 
I, I would never, you know, look to profit off of my collection or, you know, so on and so forth. I just share and I just have great stuff. But for the most part, I found myself wanting to go deeper into the production. I would taste something and it just, it just sparked my curiosity. I, you know, why does this smell like this? What is that? And I started reading. And when I start reading, I'm an avid reader for those of you that don't know. Um, I found myself just opening up that rabbit hole even more and going deeper and deeper. And eventually I said, okay, I want to know how this was produced. Who produced it? You know, this is phenomenal. Or why does this stink? You know, why does this smell like that? Not only when I open up the bottle, but even in the glass, why does it smell like that? And all those questions led me to the production side. And again, opportunity presented itself. I let my intentions be known, put it out there, put some feelers out there. And I rolled up my sleeves and I said, let's do it. I'm that person. And you know that, but that's what got me going. I, um, my curiosities, my curiosity sparked everything. And I found myself wanting to produce whiskey. So I learned to produce whiskey. I learned to, you know, I made a single malt. <laughs> um, Where is said I, single malt? What was that? Where is this single malt? Oh, where, I can't. Where are these bottles? <laughs> where, 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 I want to know where this is being held captive. I, I can't go into detail, you know, because of um, non-disclosures, but, you know, I, I found myself doing some really incredible things. And for me, the, the key takeaways and that's what's important to learn about this industry. The key takeaways for me were the experience and being able to um, add to my resume what I've done. Um, of course, I can't associate certain things with it, but being able to have that experience and being able to draw from that experience and understand even more going further into my certifications and, and again, being able to establish myself as a credible um, and experienced person in the industry. So that's, that's you know, the short of it. <laughs> I, you know, I can so here and say, I, you know, I love how you say, I love how you like keep out the details. It's like, you're, I feel like I'm, I'm having this conversation with, with George Costanza. It's like the <laughs> pandemic, yada, 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 distilled, yada, yada, yada. I'm in a political region. What can I say? And, and I have friends that, you know, they train me well, you know, how to how to be able to um, answer these questions. But I will say, you know, on the judging side, being that's a, OK, I'm, I'm going to call Amanda back with it, Virginia Distillery and find out where you're keeping that barrel of single malt. I mean, there are only so many producers of single single malt in the state of Virginia. So, yeah. So stop. OK. Um. So. <laughs> You're too much. <laughs> so I will I will say that um, you know, uh on the on the judging side, you know, being a part of the ASCAT ASCOT Awards, the Fred Minix ASCOT Awards, being a judge for that has really, you know, led to increased opportunity as well. And I I got connected with Fred through um reaching out to him when again I was seeking opportunities in the industry and looking to expand my palette and looking to gain more experience and become more skilled, learn a different way of doing things. So everything for me has been a learning opportunity and also being able to share that with other people, being able to point other people, again, it goes back to ABV, ABV being able to point other people in the direction of uh, resources to be able to build their resume or their skill set if they sh should want to. And um, like I said, there's opportunities abound in this industry. You know, it's all about what you want to do and all about putting yourself out there as well. And at one point I thought, okay, if you build it, they will come. And it's like, and pin drop, nothing, because that's not how it works. You know, People want to see you. They want to hear from you. They want to know what do you think about this and what do you have to say about this? But I, I also 
moved away from reviews. I don't do um, reviews on my page. I do, this is what it is for me, you know? So at one point I was on a podcast um, doing reviews, I think Sunday Sips with Sonia. And I moved away from that and, and just decided to really dedicate myself to building my brand, ABV Jobs, and also um, building my resume professionally in sensory and all the things that come with that. You know, you said something really important and the reviews. And for this podcast, we don't do reviews. We just share what we like or we share our experiences about That's what right. we try. And I always say this, who am I? I mean, there's, I, I, I know as I grow and you talked about, I gain experience, I gain knowledge, I learn. And to me, that's one of the things I love, not just about the spirits industry, but the cider industry, mead, the wine industry, brewing. There's oh, there's there's so much that you can learn. I mean, we we interview people that do kombucha and it's like, wow. Delicious. It's, but we had bad kombucha and we've had amazing kombucha. So, but to that point, there are some people that say, well, these, this is my favorite. Who am I to say, uh, you know, what's wrong with you? But I think, you know, if you have the experience, there are bad whiskeys out there, but it's not for me to tell you good or bad. It's just to say, this is my experience with it. That's and, right. And I have found too that, and you probably experienced this, what did I eat that day? You know, what's, Look, I I was I got leftover. I got I'm, I'm making turkey soup on the stove with the carcass. You know, I mean that's what you do after you make the big turkey. You make the turkey soup. I burned my tongue before the podcast, so I'm curious to see how this tasting is going to go. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> because you know because the tip of my tongue is singed off, and but and all of those things affect your sensory. Your right. mood affects your sensory. Your work affects your sensory. You know how you walked in the door affects your sensory. You know, if you heard a toilet flush, that affects your sensory, you know. I hope, I hope if, not for drinking whiskey, Sonia. <laughs> if you have a toothache, it affects your sensory, you know. If you're, if you're, if you're, you know, balding, whatever it is, affects hey, your hey, sensory. Hey, 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 hey. Why, why did we need to go there on the podcast, right? Everything affects your sensory. You know, not you balding. stuck your toe, balding it affects your a... sensory. Okay. All right. Yeah. Here's what we're going to do. Like, uh, I gave you, I sent you three samples. Right. Yes. And this is your passion. And this is where I want to have fun. And I said to you before we started to record, I've really wanted to share some samples. I said that Dawn should really have packaged these and then we can try to figure out what it is or what it isn't. I don't know. But okay. just curious to see um, because I know what they are, but just curious to see what it's almost like. Um, I don't know. I, I feel like we're playing a game show where we're not going to tell you what's behind door number one, door number two, door number three, but you've got a plethora of experience. You've got pandemic drinking under your, uh, under your uh, belt there. <laughs> oh yeah. So let's start with number one and just like, give me your just thoughts, ideas, and we'll see where it goes. Okay, and I opened gonna, it, by I'm the gonna way. I'm going to let been... them sit in the glass for about a minute. Okay. And then and yeah, I've been, I've been nosing okay. this while we've been talking and enjoying. Now, while you're letting that sit, you talked about your one podcast, but I understand there's a new podcast out there that people can find you on. Yes, I am a co-host on, you know, one of, uh, wait a second, one, two, three, four, five, one of five. Okay. <laughs> on uh, Black and Spirited blackandspirited.com and we bring um spirited adventures to those in the uh community just just seeking to expand their palettes and more knowledge um from our standpoint from our viewpoints you know again it's not um as you mentioned and i'll speak to that it's not reviewing it's you know going through something it's it's actually like nosing and tasting and sharing our experiences, whether it's in the home or outside of the home. So it's right, really black and spirited. I can't wait to put that yes. and follow and get it on my playlist so I can hear that and, and have that experience. Now, all right. So you do, this is, all right. 
if people don't know who you are, where do they find you on social media? They can find me at so dram good. That's so underscore dram good. And that's on all social media platforms and also sonyadhunt.com. And this is what is to me, you do you do tastings, right? Yes. So you'll guide three guide people through tastings. You've got the podcast. You've got the ABV jobs. Am I missing anything? <laughs> Some certs, and um, I'm looking to get into uh, education. Um, so I'm I'm starting on that right now, and um, you know I'm really excited about that. So I am a trainer, you know, a tips trainer. So we'll see. <laughs> All right. See, this is what's going to happen. We're going to redo this next year and we're going to need probably another hour or two on the podcast just to talk about all the things you experienced throughout the year. Yes. Yes. I'm, I'm excited. Um, I believe my next, um, I believe my next rodeo takes me offshore to either Italy or France. I'm, I'm leaning towards Italy. So <laughs> we shall see. <laughs> I'm just going to let you do your thing with the Glen Karen, and then we'll go from there and delve into Italy. <laughs> Thank you. So again, I just want to say, you have no idea what it is of the samples I sent you. So this is like, I, I think that's fun because you're just trying to figure it out or just share your experience as to what you're tasting. Pardon the interruption. Thank you so much for listening to Fermented Adventure, the podcast. Could you do us a favor? hit that follow button. It makes it easier for others to find us and it helps us climb in the rankings. Take a screenshot of the podcast, post it, tag us, and let everyone know that you listen to the Fermented Adventure podcast. Now, back to our podcast. The the, the mouthfeel on this is very nice. It's, um, it's not, it's so much warming. It warms my lips, but not my mouth. See, and I get the opposite. I get warmth on my tongue, the sides of my mouth. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's different from everyone, from yeah, front to right. mid to back palate. Right. And for disclosure, this is the second time I'm drinking this. So I was curious as to how this would be once I opened the bottle and um, from my first initial experience. My primary taste on this is... A little bit of three things. I get sugar, I get acid, and I also get vinegar. Um, so I'm getting that sweet and that sour combination on this, but more so on the nose. What I'm what I'm noticing with this sample is that right away I'm getting grain. And I'm also getting so so grain is forward, and I'm also getting a fruity bouquet. So I would say it's that that dry fruit, not your fresh fruit more so. I'm looking at dry apricot. And that's maybe very some nice. maybe so some figs in there. Like so it's perfumed. I'm getting I'm getting some dark also. Dry apricot, some some dark notes as well. Like I said, it's it's very it has a nice perfume to it. It's very fragrant vanilla what's surprising about this is that i'm not getting vanilla bean i'm getting more so of and i don't want to say it you know i, I i'm almost getting a vanilla additive versus you know fresh vanilla bean or like an extract right yes like an extract and it's a, it's a wee bit astringent a wee bit astringent. And I and I knew I was going to get that the moment I got that, you know, that that sweet sour combination and then also the apricot. So it's a pool of two balances in this along with that green. But I would say it's quite pleasant on the nose. And there's a nut overcast in this also. And I would say it's the skin of the nut. I get the skin of the nut on the sides of the palate towards the back of the palate. So that explains that astringency that that is going on with this. I like this. Okay. I like this. I, 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 I can't wait to find out what this is. <clears throat> that sweetness on this is 
It's actually nice. And and I don't lean more towards the sweet spectrum. Okay. <laughs> so I will tell you what you're drinking. And it's mouth coating. What's that? I said it's mouth coating. It's mouth coating. Okay. Yes. So what you're drinking is? No. Okay. Noble. Okay. Where's the firm? So this is a Tennessee whiskey. And this is a straight Tennessee whiskey aged in American oak and finished in French oak staves. And this is the Rickhouse edition. So this is a small batch. That and explains a lot of the fragrancy. I love French oak. I'm a fan of it. And in terms of Tennessee, um, I didn't want to say a state, and that's only because any state can produce something that tastes like it's from so on and so forth. So what I will say is that the hazelnut, the nut sort of, you know, leans towards, you know, a Tennessee, but again, I'm not going to um, associate that more so or less with that being a Tennessee thing, you know, with Tennessee. Whiskey. Well, I was wondering if you would get, more of the Lincoln County method. Um, the, you know, you, I, I find that there's a pronounced, you, you get the pronounced char in there. That that's what comes off to me. So See, I so don't get the pronounced char. When I first tried this, I found that to be very, it was, it was so intense. I found it to be very off-putting. And oh. this, like I said, this is the second time I'm having this. And a lot of those floral notes have opened up now and mm -hmm. to, to the sweetness that's opened up, but opening up this bottle for the first time was just like, ah, I, I, I just, I wasn't doing backflips and now I'm like, all right, we got some air in this. We've allowed this to kind of rest out a little bit. And now it's, it's a different whiskey. It's very enjoyable. I get, I get more out of it. The longer it's in the air, and the more, yeah. you know, I put it on the palate. But again, pronounced is that perfume. Pronounced is that sweetness and that vanilla. Um, I would say that apricot is very forward, but then it balances with something on the dark spectrum, which is just phenomenal. I, I would definitely, you know, want this after trying it for the first time. So okay. All right, we'll yes. send you a whole bottle. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's go to number two. And okay. um, this will be fun. So that was number one. That was Noble. And they have a, a number of expressions out now. So now they're getting to the uh, handcrafted small batches we talked about and, and some other variations. I'm getting, <clears throat> this is nutty. Nutty cereal. Again, I, I don't know if, you know, you have a theme going on here, but it's sweet. It's pronounced sweetness on the nose and the taste as well. But then I'm getting bitter. So there's some tannins there. And that would explain some things um, between that nutty and that cereal. I was also hoping to find things that you haven't had before. So good. That was that was good. the other goal with what I said. Oh, I love it. It's a challenge. I love it. Getting some graham cracker. Do you know what variety? Do you know who makes it? Is it Keebler? Is it Nabisco? <laughs> <laughs> um, there's definitely more of a a toffee than a caramel. You have some spice in there. I want to say a wee bit of clove and cinnamon. And the, 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 the. <laughs> now this this awakens the front of my palate front to mid not a long finish but that nuttiness is coming through and there's also a yeast characteristic in this as well more so than an earthy one now I will tell you the noble was 95 proof this is 100 so we went up in proof a little bit Okay, so it's cross between graham cracker cookie dough, <laughs> and I'm getting 
walnut um, to match that astringency, clove and cinnamon spice. There's a little bit of bitter in there. Um, there's a bit of bitter in there. You know, I'm not going to say that it's harsh, but it's definitely, it's definitely some tannic in there. Tobacco. It's coming through. I like it when, you know, it picks up some herbaceous varietals. See, this is a journey, isn't it? Yes, it Especially is. when you don't know when, you, you don't see the bottle. So it's, it's, it's I love really, blinds. Yeah. Maple syrup. I was trying to figure it out. I'm like, is that toffee? Is that caramel? I'm like, no, it was almost sea salt in between the two. And the second I put water on my palate, maple syrup. Definitively maple syrup, tobacco, some nuts. And I'm going to say roasted nuts. It has a bit of, um, now this does have that charred oak influence that you spoke of the last time. And that's where I'm getting that, um, that roasted nuts from and a bit of that sweet smoke. And that tobacco and that maple syrup may just be like more, more burnt sugar than anything, but more maple syrup. Yes, it's, it's definitely more maple, clove and cinnamon. So this was tasty as well. Thank you. All right. I've so, here, samples. so here's the reveal. This is a Sip Awards Gold from 2022. Yes. This is Cinder and Smoke from our friends at Bard Distillery in Kentucky. This is 100 proof. This is uh, their founder select. I need that bottle. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's, because that's even, high praise. Even with, the, even with the bitterness, I I like this. I really like this. So you've introduced me to two wonderful pours. Thank you, Rich. <laughs> well, there's one more to go. Who knows how this is going to work? So this is fun. This is... This is why I was so excited to sit down. And as I've been watching your journey, you know, we, we, we go back, but I've been watching your journey on social media. And I said, you know, doing it in this format would be a lot of fun to do with Sonia. And it is, it's been fun. And I appreciate that. And, and, and this is, you know, this is like when you come up to our area, this is what we do. We have dinners, come on out, pick up bottles, do whatever you want. You're but part of my that. visit coming home. <laughs> <laughs> but we love, this is what I love. We love sitting down and just like what we just did. You go through, um, and I know a lot of times on the podcast, we do more of an abridged version to this, but just be able to sit there. And, you know, we have friends that, you know, we go out and smoke cigars and, uh, you know, we'll, we'll sip whiskey and, you know, we'll, we'll just kind of find all the nuances, characteristics. Some people come out of left field with uh, with crazy stuff. Yeah, it tastes it, it tastes a lot like my old baseball glove when I was uh, in elementary school. And I'm thinking, what were you doing shooting on your baseball glove? I, I don't yeah, know. That's how a that real works. thing. <laughs> that's a real thing. That's because a real I thing. use isotoners in my tasting, you know, like. I'm like, okay, that's leather glove. That's an isotoner. You know, okay, like but when is that a, a nose or is that a flavor? Because if you're chewing on your isotoners, now we have to have a whole different <laughs> podcast. It, it comes with, you know, just a familiarity that you have. That's what, you know, um sensory is all about. It's being able those those mind maps and those sensory maps that you've connected to your experiences. That's why for each person it's unique. Yeah. All right. Speaking of unique. Why don't you grab sample number three? Okay. And let's play with that. And Shout out to my bourbon thieves. This is their <laughs> Glen. <laughs> All right. Oh, I'm getting dark fruits on this. I'm getting hmm, more of a, a date on this and dark fruit right up front. This is a kiss of darkness. And slight bit of honey. Is that like a bit of honey, like the candy bar? No, actual honey. Oh, because I was going to say bit of honey, like the candy bar. <laughs> and um, I don't even know what that tastes like. No, 
Yeah, it's like um, you get sweet and honey and chewy and um, these little pieces. I think there's peanuts in there, too. Hmm. Now, I got to send you one of those. Yes, please do. <laughs> I don't even have sugar in my house. I like this smell as well. I'm picking up cane. Honey and cane. Oh, this is very fruity. There's some perfumed fragrance going in there. Now, if I told you this was 118 proof, would you believe that? If you told me that, yes. However, if you didn't know, in my in my past experience, you know, um, when I first started out, I expect 118 proof to really hit me. Me leaning more towards the um, towards all spectrums, not just the high proof spectrum. At one point, I actually said that because I was not aware, and over time, again, developing my palate and sipping many different um proofs i've learned that i love them all as long as it is delicious as long as it is well made as long as it is a substantial pour i'll take to it i don't care if it's 90 proof you know it can be 130 proof it, it really doesn't matter but this is really good and i'm surprised that it's 118 to be honest i felt the same way when i had it and i had to do a double take on the bottle because it just Ooh. doesn't drink like a 118. It drinks not more than 100, but not not up at that high part. <clears throat> I will say that of the bottles, and I don't like doing this. Oh, my goodness. I feel so on the spot. <laughs> that this is my favorite of the three. And I don't know if that matches with you, but if so, cheers. <laughs> <laughs> um. Oh, no, I mean, you know, sometimes sometimes your children do stand out things. So today this is your favorite and tomorrow it's in trouble and uh, you, you have another favorite, you know? Yeah. This is my favorite of the three pours. Um, I just like what it's leaving me with. Now, on the back of the palette and the finish is leaving me well. Um, it's sitting right here. I'm getting that Kentucky hug from it. And it's and it for me, it's very well balanced. All of those fragrant, fruity, oh my, what is that? And toasty influences are really coming through. This is very, this is more of a toasty pour than a smoky pour, nutty pour. It's very toasty. And I like that. I got a slight bit of almost licorice, I want to say. I love licorice. Uh, so I got a little bit of fruit. I got fresh fruit. I got dry fruit. It's peppery. I get black pepper from it. In addition to some toasty bread and some honey. And that that makes me feel good. See, this is this is my feel good pour this evening. Thank you. <laughs> I, I, I believe that's why I saved it for last. <laughs> Thank you. I really like this. Okay, drop in on me. What is it? <laughs> so this is Keeper's Heart. Okay. Cash and they're term. out of Minneapolis, Minnesota. This is 59% bourbon and 41% Irish whiskey. You did you, you did a snap of the fingers there for some reason. <laughs> I knew it was different. I knew it was an outlier. But I couldn't I, I couldn't exactly tell you why it was an outlier. It was, it's just good. <laughs> Deeper's Heart is doing some really wonderful things. And um, if you haven't had any other bottles, we've got some at the house. So another reason why you to stop by. But seriously, uh, they were a guest on the podcast and um, really enjoy what they're producing. And there's so much more to experience um, that they're going to have coming down the line. That candy apple is now coming through. And I don't <laughs> know can, if you got that. We can that. spend hours just opening. We can yes. just drink this bottle. This is this is really opening up. And you get the, the green candy apple, not red. So you get that green crisp candy apple. 
Oh my, that's so delightful. But then you're still getting that dark fruit as well. You're getting that date and that honey, the honey is still there, um, which is nice. And it's toasty. It, it would, it's, it smells like a toasted pour, like the 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 oak has been toasted. So I want to find out more about this one too. You gave me some assignments today. <laughs> See, I was hoping, as I said, sit down, let's spend mm -hmm. some time. Let's talk about what you're doing, the great things that are happening in your life, but opening up a bottle and just sharing and yes. experiencing and just going through the nuances of what is produced, taking this time, setting it aside, and just having these little moments in the world. Yes. I, right. I love I mean, the pores that are shared with friends. Those resonate with me so much, um, especially around the holiday times. You know, I, I no longer have my mom. Um, and... You know, it, it's just really delightful to be able to pour something that invokes memories or that really sits well with you and, and, and gives you something new to think about and, and to discover. So that's what that's what this journey is about. Right. That's what spirits is about. It's about, you know, does it end here or does it go further? Of course, that's your choice. But. You know, it's just one of those things that um, is really heartwarming to me. Yeah. Sonia, I'm grateful for your time tonight. Thank you so much. Thanks for being a friend of Fermented Adventure. We can't wait awesome. to see what happens with you along the way, all the things you're doing. Check out our social media. It's fun to watch. ABV Jobs, if you're looking to expand what you're doing in the spirits world, if you're looking to hire people in the spirits world, definitely check that out. And we can't wait to uh, sit down. Let's open up a bottle together and just say cheers. Cheers. Thank you so much, Rich. You're welcome. Thanks, Sonia.